welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be a speed review. It's been quite some time since I've done one of these. So I have a whole bunch of products that I've done first impressions on and I've been testing them out for a while. And I just come back to give you more detailed thoughts on these products. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. But let's just get started because I have quite the collection going. All right, so apparently the last time I did one of these was the end of July. That seems impossible. I don't even know how we're in October right now, end of October, but here we are. So like I said, I have quite a bit and I used to rank these, but recently I just decided because this is kind of like a miscellaneous bunch of products, I have lip products, cheap products, face palettes, primers, just a whole bunch of things. It's better to just more categorize them. So I have my Holy Grail products. I have good, not great, not bad. And then I have like my meh products, products that I like having. I wasn't upset at them. I wouldn't declutter them, but I don't like love them. I wouldn't recommend them. And then I have just like the bad pile that like, Typically, I just wouldn't keep in my collection. Any videos that I've done on these products will be linked down in the description box below, as well as all the makeup that I'm wearing today. But like I said, I have a lot. I know I've said that about three times now. So let's just start talking about these and stop procrastinating. I just keep looking down at all these products. Like, where do I start? Normally, we go worst to best, but I kind of want to start off on a positive note. I'm not feeling like going too negative. So maybe we'll save that for last and go reverse style this time. That sounds good, right? So let's talk about my favorite products out of all of these first. I don't have too many. Like I really saved this category for like the best of the best. It takes a lot to be in this category. So I only have four things and two of them are the same. They are the Lisa Eldridge Velveteen Liquid Lip Colors. I have the shade Dragon as well as Fawn. I've been kind of on like an unofficial no buy for lip products because I have so many. I will be picking up more of these colors. I love them so much. I know liquid lipsticks are kind of making a comeback. You're either for it or you're not. I am for it. I like them as long as it's a comfortable finish. This does not dry down all the way. You're still going to get some transferring on them, but I just like how they look on the lips and I like how you can kind of layer them to make it more of like your perfect shade if you want to. I really just branched out with this dragon shade. I don't have too many and I don't regret it at all. I will kind of swatch these for you. I did a video swatching all of my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks when I reviewed these and they're just, this is good. This is probably my favorite Lisa Eldridge lip formula, quite honestly. Like this is just a win in my book. I really like them. Now, the only thing to note about these is the colors do not match the bullets. So for instance, Fawn is a lot darker in the Velveteen than it is in the Velvet Fawn, the bullet lipstick. So just keep that in mind. Like if you're looking for matchy matchy, it's not completely like that. But I really loved those lipsticks. And then I have two more. This is the Illamasqua, what is this called? Gel Sculpt Contour. It's like a water contour in the shade Outline. I picked this up because I was watching my friend Bridget try this product out and she recommended it and I had to hunt this down and I am so glad that I did. This is the perfect contour. It's so cooling on the skin. I'm trying to like build up the swatch here because it really is like this water contour. It gives you that perfect amount of sculpt without looking like a Kardashian. Like you just don't look super sculpted, but it gives you just a little bit of something. This is a great product. And I am so glad that I followed her recommendation. Like the swatch does not do it justice, but it it really adds something to your makeup. If you're wanting just a little bit of sculpt, maybe if you are someone who is a little intimidated by contour, this is a great beginner product. And it's also just, it's just a great product overall. I am so surprised and happy with that product. I'm really glad I picked it up. And then the last one in my just favorite recommendation category is the Giorgio Armani Blush. 
These were really hyped up when they first came out and I don't see anyone talking about them anymore. I think that Giorgio Armani comes out with really nice complexion products. So everyone was really excited about the Neo Nudes that came out. A lot of people hyped those up, myself included. I really like that formula. So then they came out with this powder blush formula. I have the shade 30 and this is a really nice blush. It's just pigmented without being too much. I kind of got a different shade than I usually get but it's just, it's blurring on the skin. It's one of my, you know, if I didn't have so many blushes, like I have way too many blushes and I still, I haven't been able to like pare it down yet. It's one of my drawers that just needs the most help, but for some reason I can't let go of. I would buy more shades of this. I just think it's so solid. It looks great on top of cream. It looks great by itself. You can build it up for more intensity or you can sheer it out if you want just like a light wash of color. I think this is so versatile and I'm really happy I picked this up as well. So those were all of my really, really great products. Like if I was to rank these one to 10, this would get like a nine or a 10, like the Lisa Aldridge 10 for sure. This is a 10 and then this I would give like a nine. But now I have like the seven eights. So the good, I would recommend these like, but I could also take them or leave them at the same time. This is the one that I have the most of out of any category, only because like I said, it's really hard to get to that nine ten spot. But let's just get started. Where do I want to start? Let's start with this Chanel blush. So this came in their fall winter collection for 2023. I'm already far behind because Chanel has already launched their winter collection, a different collection. I can't keep up with all their collections. They are launching a lot and I'm not going to pick up any more Chanel for the rest of the year, I've decided, but I did want to get this blush here. This is the Equinox blush and I have the shade Beige and Coral. It kind of, it's gotten messed up. I've used it clearly and it's, it's a nice blush. I like it a lot. You know, do you have to run out and get it? No, like it's expensive. So I wouldn't really recommend it. If you like Chanel, I think this is a really good Chanel blush. I have other Chanel blushes. I have Elegance, I have a Tweed blush, and this is just more pigmented than that. Those give like a really nice soft look. And this just has a little bit more color, a little bit more vibrancy. Seeing more of that blush trend, how blush is just a little bit more popular, it makes sense that this has a little bit more pigment compared to older Chanel blushes, but I'm really happy. I love the embossing and I don't regret my purchase. Just like, I don't know if you necessarily need this. This is just like a nice to have. I have some other complexion products. These are just so cute. I love these. I think I put these in, I wore these when I did like my 1000 subscriber chatty get ready with me. These are from Yes Style and they're from Peri Para and they're like these little blushes. I mean, what is this called? Pure Blushed Sunshine Cheek. I have Cloudy Pink and I have Coral, some kind of coral. I can't read the back, but it was like their little limited edition Maltese collection. I talked about it in this video, but my mom has Maltese's. You know, they're cute. I can't help it. What? They're cute little dogs. Like they just are. I've fallen in love with them. I never would have picked out like a Maltese for myself. Like I'm not a Maltese person, but... They've melted my heart just a little bit and I love them. So I had to pick these up when I saw them. This coral shade is definitely my favorite. It's a nice blush, like they're inexpensive. I think they are eight bucks each. So it wasn't like that much. This pink is a little bit intimidating because it's a very cool toned and it, you really have to like go into this pink part. Like you have to be careful. I would not recommend these for anyone with, a deeper complexion than light. Like anything deeper than me, you probably won't like it. It'll look chalky, but it's like a cute little collection piece and I don't regret having it. I'm putting it in the grate because they make me smile and I just like having them. Let's talk about some of the highlights that I have in this category. The first one being the Scooby-Doo one. This is from Glam Light's first Scooby-Doo collection, but I had it unopened and it shifts like that. And then I ended up trying it when I did a first impression review on the Glam Light Scooby-Doo palette. Now I do more of a speed review style for palettes and foundations separately. So just know that's kind of why this is more miscellaneous. 
palettes I will rank and foundations I will also rank because that's the two categories I try the most out of. So that video is to come to be determined, but I did try this in that video and this was a really nice surprise. I mainly bought this for the packaging, again, like the Maltese, but the product's also good. So that was a pleasant surprise, which is why I'm putting it in like the good, great category, because these I'll actually get some use out of. Now they're very different. This is like an iridescent, glittery, shimmery highlight. It's not something I'm gonna wear every day, but the formula is nice. I will get some use out of this. And when I purchased it, I was fully purchasing it, expecting that it was just gonna kind of be like a novelty item in my collection. And it really surprised me. Glam Light, at the time that I'm filming this, like they're right now just releasing all these things for Halloween. And I'm excited to see what it is, but at the same time, I don't know how much of it I will pick up but this was nice. At least I know now, it was my first time trying Glam Light, that they actually have not just like cool collection pieces, but good products. And the other highlight that I have is this YSL Touche Clot 3D All Over Glow. I don't think they make this anymore. I'm pretty sure it's discontinued, so I'm sorry to talk about it. Maybe I shouldn't talk about it, but I'm still going to because I did a first impression on it. And it's really, really nice. It's a perfect, subtle highlight. Like you could use this, just like it says, it says all over glow. If you like a shimmery all over finishing powder, like if you like those hourglass powders that have more of the glitter, less of the sheen, you'd like this. For me, it's a little bit too glowy to be an all over face powder, but it's the perfect amount of subtle highlight really enjoy this. I could see why it's all the hype. I remember buying it because so many people raved about it. And for some reason, YSL discontinued it pretty quickly. I don't know why, because it's a really nice product. And I'm happy that I finally, finally pulled this out of my just unopened products sitting there waiting to be used and tried it out and did a first impression. Now, let's see, where do I want to go from here? this bronzer. This was the Gimme Glow bronzer in Ocean Drive. Here's what it looks like. This is my first time trying any of the bronzers from Gimme Glow. Here's what it looks like. It's a little bit more of a cool tone bronzer. I typically prefer that. And they have, I think, eight shades of bronzer. They have a good shade selection of bronzers. So if you are looking, if you have a hard time finding a bronzer that's really, really light or really, really deep, I would check them out because it seemed like they have a good range. Formula-wise, it was really nice, no complaints. I don't think it was too expensive. I'm happy to have this in my collection. It blended really easily. It gave me exactly what I was looking for in a bronzer. Like, is it anything to write home about? No, do I have bronzers that are like my holy grail? Yes but I would recommend this bronzer if someone was to ask me about it. And if they, if I liked it, I would tell them yes, and I would encourage them to purchase it. So that's why I'm putting it in the great category. And I have three more products. Let's, let's go from, let's just talk about this one because this one, I guess I probably like the most out of all of them. This is probably what I most recently reviewed on my channel. This is the Bobbi Brown Lux Eye and Glow Palette in Cool Glow. Bobbi Brown has been releasing these types of palettes a lot, and this one was hard to find for me. This is, out of all of them, this was the one that I wanted the most because it's Cool Glow. It has the Pink Glow highlight that Bobbi Brown already has in her lineup, and then six Lux eyeshadows. I really like this. I tried it when I did my Chanel video. It'll be linked below, but you know, I liked this. It kind of underwhelmed me and that's why it's in the great category and not like the absolute perfection category because this is a very subtle palette. I was expecting a little bit more from these eyeshadows and you just don't get that. My fingers are just completely dirty now, but like this is the darkest shade in the palette and I'm really digging in there and you don't get too much color, which is fine. I just, I was expecting a little bit more of an impact from these shadows it wasn't 100% what I was expecting. Now that I know what it's like, and it's more for just like a subtle wash of color, I do like it. I like the packaging. I recommend this formula. I do just recommend waiting to find a color story that you prefer because there are quite a bit 
of different palettes like in the same layout with the highlight and the shadows here. So find a color story that speaks to you. Just know going into it, it will be more of a subtle palette. It's not going to be high impact. I mean, it's not indie shadow quality or just what you're getting from an indie shadow in comparison. It's completely on the other spectrum of like a Chanel shadow, just that light wash of color. You're not going to be able to build up too many looks. But if that's your style, if that's your vibe, you will absolutely love this. And I do recommend them. I think that they're really nice. I first bought the trio, the blush, bronzer, and highlight from Bobbi Brown. And I really like that formula, which is why I ended up splurging on this because this baked formula, Bobbi Brown's just doing something with that. I just wish that there was more communication on their launches because I, I saw this on an Instagram new makeup release page and I really had to follow up and like find out when it was being released. It was in Australia, but I couldn't find it in Europe or the US. There was just like a whole thing with that. And I wish it was a little bit easier to find. Like I can't even find it on the Bobbi Brown website. I had to buy it from a department store, Look Fantastic, Selfridges I saw it on. So I don't know. I don't like the communication for a nice palette. Like just make it easily accessible. That's all that I ask. Two more things in this category and then we'll get to the mint category. This is the Givenchy, what is this called? Skin Perfecto cream hydrating compact moisturizing compact i bought this because it kind of reminded me of the chanel healthy glow in rosy beige which i heard like came out and now it's gone i don't know why but it's kind of like a pink moisturizing primer now this one is a lot lighter than the chanel but i believe you can still pick this up like if I had the Chanel swatch next to it, you would see a pink glow. This is a lot more balmy. It is nice though. Like, did I need this? No, I'm still putting this in here because I like it. I like using it. And I do notice a difference when I use it. That pink tone makes a difference. And I don't know what it is about it, but I notice just like my skin looks brighter, more fresh, more youthful when I'm wearing it. I like wearing this type of product on no makeup days when I just want something for my skin to look more youthful. It just provides like a 0.2% filter on your face. So I don't know if it's like a necessary product, but if you saw this, I was kind of just wondering what this is because like, is it a primer? Is it a moisturizer? But it's in like this cushion compact, very odd to me. So I just had to try it. it does have a very strong rose scent. So keep that in mind. But if you're thinking of purchasing this, I can say it is a nice product, but maybe not like a necessary one. I do, I do like having it though. And then the last thing that I have in this category is just a Fenty gloss. It was my first time trying the cream formula and I quite liked it. I have nothing bad to say about this. I, do I like this better than the original? Yes, I do. I have the shade Fenty Glow, which I actually have the lip gloss next to me because I'm trying to finish this little mini here that I've had forever. So obviously it's just gonna be a lot more opaque. This is the cream. This is the original Fenty Glow. Now it does bother me just a little bit that the colors aren't the same across the board considering these are both called Fenty Glow, but it's not that big of a deal. It is a nice gloss. I have a lot of just sheer lip glosses, so it's nice to have just a more opaque gloss without it feeling thick and gloopy. Like it provides color, but not to the point where it's just like a layer of gloss on your, on your lips. So I do really like this. Hadn't tried it before. And I'd be interested to pick up other colors from this line. And that is all of the good categories. Let's now go to like the five sixes, like not bad. Well, maybe more like four, five, six. That's where I would rank these. I don't have too many of them, but like these are products I'm going to keep, not declutter. I really save like the, the bad ones and like a declutter type thing. But these are like, I don't, I just don't love them. For me, these are products that like, if someone was to ask me if they should buy it, like I'd, I'd say no, but I don't hate them. I hope that makes sense in my brain. Um, Most of these are complexion. So I have the Guerlain 
summer edition bronzer. They come out with like this limited edition bronzer every single year. This one's called Flower Blossom. And I don't know why I bought this. Well, I do know why. Because the embossing is so beautiful. The problem with this bronzer is the Guerlain bronzers pull so, so orange. If you like an orange bronzer, I mean, this is this is your bronzer, but for me, I don't like that. I did actually, I think in the video, pair this bronzer with this orange blush, and that's how I was able to make this work, which is why I'm not gonna declutter it, because at least I can make this bronzer work. But I knew when I bought this, I was fully falling for the scam of just the embossing. I don't, I don't like the tone of this. That's all this comes down to. It's not a bad formula, but that's what this is. I wouldn't recommend this at all. Last year, I purchased the B one. That was also the limited edition summer one. I should have learned my lesson then. I didn't. And I made the same mistake. I will not be doing it again, regardless of how pretty the bronzer is. So I'm going to keep this one, wear it with an orange blush in the summertime. But I just, I can't recommend this bronzer. I much, like you can just see like between this one and the Give Me Glow, like the difference in tone. I prefer this tone and that's that. I wouldn't recommend this. Now I also have the Ofra highlighter. This is the collab with Samantha March. I feel bad like putting this in this category, but like it is what it is. It's nothing against Samantha March or anything. It's great to have a collab. This is strictly on formula. Like the Ofra highlights just aren't my jam anymore. They're way too blinding. I much prefer the YSL. Even, you know, the Scooby-Doo ones like cool. It has like a special effect to it. This is just too, too blinding. Like it's, it's too much on the skin. So I'm not really into Ofra highlights anymore. I know they were all the rage at one point, but for me, it's just not a highlight that I love. I'm going to keep it because I do love watching Samantha March and it maybe has like some use in my collection, but I just, I wouldn't recommend it. And that's all that this comes down to. The other complexion product I have is from Scooby-Doo, and this is the Blush Duo. This, if you watched that video, was absolutely horrifying on my face. I can't get this to work no matter how many times I've tried it. Every single time, it is just so pigmented. I know a lot of people talk about this, the Glam Light Strawberry Shortcake Blush, but I don't know. I don't think I'd be picking up any more blushes from Glamlight. Maybe if I really like the IP, I would just to test it out and see if it's the same across the board. But as of right now, like Glamlight's blushes are just too, too pigmented for me. I had a hard time blending these out. Maybe I'm not using the right brush. I don't know. I try this multiple times and every time I felt just like too clown cheeks with this and maybe it's the colors. I don't know. I want to give benefit of doubt to the product because I don't like saying that products are bad. I like this enough to keep it. You'll see some more Scooby-Doo like down below in the bad category, but yeah, I don't know. It just was too much for me. I don't think this is a blush that's just easy to use that I would recommend to anyone because of how hard it is to just blend it. So that's that on that. And then some of the last things, this Dominique Cosmetics Powder. I picked up the concealer as well as the powder in pink. I was trying for a long, long time to get the Huda Beauty pink powder because I hadn't tried a pink powder. I finally gave up and bought this Dominique Cosmetics one because it's just all the rage to have like a pink powder. And then of course, after I purchased it, I was able to get the Huda Beauty one. At least I only got a mini, but this, I don't know, maybe I'm not getting, I'm not getting this whole pink powder trend, but like it was too brightening for me and maybe I need to pair it with a darker concealer. Maybe the concealers I was using were too light, but it just, it made it too stark under my eyes. It didn't give me that filter that I wanted and it's pink. Like the Givenchy, I can see how it's like a very light filtered effect. This I can't. If I had to choose between, I mean, obviously I'd choose the Givenchy, it just ranked higher, but I don't know. If you like pink powder and you use it, it's your holy grail, like tell me down below in the comments, like how you're using it. If there's like a secret to this, because I have not cracked it. I don't know what it is, 
but every time I used it, I just felt like you could see a clear distinction between where I had the powder under my eyes versus the rest of my face. And this isn't like an all over face powder. So I don't know. It's just, it wasn't my favorite. I need to maybe play around with it more. I tried it four or five times before I just made up my mind on where I wanted to rank it. I do want to like this product, especially because it takes me so long. It's going to take me forever to get through this. I don't want to declutter it. And I have the Huda Beauty one. So I need to figure out how pink powder works. The last two things I have are this eye pencil that I got from YesStyle. They sent this to me for free. This is from Moni. And it's just a very light pink with some shimmer. It's not a bad eyeliner. This is transfer proof like no other. I just don't use that much eyeliner. I'm typically using a shadow for my eyeliner. I would maybe put this in like the waterline. Again, it is transfer proof, but it was tough with this glitter. It was tough to get in my waterline. Once I got it on there, it stayed, but it didn't really want to stick to my waterline. So that's just where I'm a little bit confused on this product because that's the only way I would use it. I wouldn't use it all over the lid or as an eyeliner. And if you do it that way, it's going to stick to your lid and not move without like eye makeup remover. It is very difficult to take off, but I would only use it in the waterline and it doesn't stick that well. I really have to like rub in there to get any kind of color payoff. So it's just okay. I wouldn't recommend it. And the last thing is also this discontinued lip stick that... I never tried. This is from Pure and Barbie, the like very first Barbie collab with a makeup brand ever. And then I never tried it. I bought it solely for the packaging. I mean, look at this. I wish they still sold this or like when the Barbie movie launched, they came back out with this lipstick because it is just stunning. It's okay on the lips, but for me, I'm just starting to realize bullet lipsticks aren't my jam. It's a little bit of a thick product for me and I feel like it just emphasizes my lip lines. It just doesn't smooth my lips like I want to, like a velveteen. However, if I put a liquid lipstick down and then put this on top, I like that look. It kind of, the liquid lipstick almost acts like a primer to my lips and smooths out those lines. So that way I like, but on its own, it's not my favorite. I do really like the color, but even just touching it, like I can feel how thick it is. So it's just not my favorite. However, because of the packaging and because of the color, it went into the okay category. And then I only have just like the bad things, which would be like one to three. Is that where we're kind of, kind of at? And I don't have too many actually, mostly lip products. Let's talk about that first. All the lip products from the Scooby-Doo collection. So the lip glosses, oops and the lipsticks. Again with the lipsticks. This formula, first of all, like it's cute, but you have to like really line it up to have it look cute. This formula is even thicker. Like I am dragging on my hand here, even thicker than the pure or just other bullet lipsticks that I have. And I don't love that. It really emphasizes my lip lines on this. So it's just not my favorite. This is the Daphne. This is the Velma. The colors aren't my favorite either. So that's why I'm just, I wouldn't recommend this. Out of all the things from Glamlight, I would recommend the highlights, the eyeshadow palettes, the accessories. They have really cute accessories. The lip products just even worse than the blush. Now, typically I would declutter the things that I have in this category. I wouldn't even keep them around, but I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to put these directly into like my makeup memory box because I love Scooby-Doo that much, but I know that I'll never wear these ever again. I just don't like them. The lip glosses are a little bit better, but they're just so glittery and I'm not like a glittery person. You can feel the glitter on the lips. Again, the colors are just not like the most flattering. You really have to layer these. They can't go just by themselves. So they just, they don't have anything to stand on. And it's more just to me, like this was just a little bit, it missed the mark, I think. This was just, you know, we need to come out with a lip gloss. 
we're doing a collection. Here's Velma, here's Daphne. Like very pretty, but on the lips, not practical, not something that I would use. Not even on like a special occasion where like the highlight I would, you know, only use that certain times. These I just won't. So they're gonna go in my little makeup memory box of just makeup things that I don't necessarily want to use, but I don't wanna let go of. And then the very last thing that I have is another thing I was sent from Yes Style, and it's the sunscreen. I don't know if it counts, but I want to talk about it again. If you saw the video where I applied this, it like instantly pilled on me, and I didn't have any primer on. I just had moisturizer. I have not had this bad of a sunscreen in a while. I, I have glitter like all over me. I, I am going to use this because I hate just like wasting an SPF. I can use this on no makeup days, but it's just very finicky. And I have other sunscreens that work so much better than this that are affordable. So there's just no point. Is it moisturizing? Yes. But if you apply too much, it will pill. And the problem with that is like you need to apply a good amount of sunscreen to actually get the SPF benefits. So you're like stuck in this catch 22. I just don't like it. Yes Style sent me another sunscreen a couple months ago, like the very first thing they ever sent me. I love that sunscreen. I have about three pumps left of it and I will be repurchasing that one. So that also just comes into play comparing that one to this one. This one's just bad. And that one is so much better. That one's like $12. It's the Haru Haru Black Rice sunscreen. Love it. Favorite sunscreen I've ever, ever tried. So... I wouldn't recommend this one. If you're going to pick up a K-Beauty sunscreen, get the other one. I'll link both of them below, but this just pilled and I wasn't a fan. And that's going to complete this speed reviews. I had 21 items. I just counted. I don't think I did too bad considering video's not too long. I mean, we'll see once I edit it down, but of course, let me know your thoughts below. Like, do we have the same opinions? Do we have differing opinions? Mostly want to know about this pink powder because it is the one thorn in my side that I just want to make work. I don't want to waste this. Any just like helpful tips. And then I also just want to know if there's something that I need to reconsider because of course I spent all my money on everything except the two Yes Style items and I want to make them work. I want to get my money's worth out of these items. So if you love something that I didn't love as much, let me know why you love it down below. That's where I'm going to leave you all though. I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.